Over the last 20 years, international courts and tribunals have played a decisive role in enforcing IHL by sanctioning violations of this body of law. Indeed, at the end of the Cold War and 50 years after the creation of the Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals, the Security Council of the United Nations agreed to create ad hoc tribunals to prosecute and try persons responsible for mass atrocities committed in the armed conflict that had taken place in the former Yugoslavia and in Rwanda. In the years that followed, other ad hoc tribunals were established to determine the responsibilities for mass crimes committed during the conflict that occurred in Cambodia, Iraq and Sierra Leone. Several international organizations, including the United Nations, also helped create national institutions with strong international components to prosecute war crimes in countries such as in Kosovo or in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The enthusiasm for international criminal justice culminated with the establishment in 1998 of a permanent and potentially universal judicial institution, the International Criminal Court, ICC. Since then, other international tribunals are in the process of being established to complement the work of the ICC, for instance, in Central African Republic. The establishment and work of international courts and tribunals has had a decisive impact on IHL, particularly on the development of the notion of war crimes, that is, crimes committed in the context of armed conflicts. For instance, it was mainly through the work of international criminal tribunals that it was accepted that war crimes could be committed in non-international armed conflicts. The UNIVA Conventions and Additional Protocol 1 had not recognized the applicability of war crimes to non-international armed conflicts. We will begin by discussing the particularities of the other courts and tribunals that are entrusted with the responsibility of repressing violations of IHL, crimes against humanity and genocide. We will then examine the functioning of the ICC before evaluating the overall system of international criminal justice. We will conclude by analyzing proposals for addressing the shortcomings of the present system.